One day at the beginning of December, I went out to Carrick on Shannon to buy lights for the garden. I was reared with paper decorations hanging from the ceiling of the dining room and a set of Christmas tree lights as big as egg cups and as delicate as eggshells. Half of them were broken, but an electrical man, a neighbour, fixed them so that the ones that were working still lit up and that was Christmas. So I was slow to take on board the digital Christmas. I remember being amazed in Warsaw as I strolled along the castle area, how advanced the world was in celebrating the season. And it also struck me how differently it was imagined. In my childhood, I dreamed of Santa, baby Jesus, the donkey in the manger, and the stars in the sky. Now there are reindeers and elves and abstract shapes of cosmic order, all flashing in different colours to signal the season. As I wandered through the home store and woodies and other shops offering decorations for the garden, I found it difficult to connect with them. But the winter evenings have a strange effect on the spirit, and in the half-light I packed the Corolla and went home to see what they looked like hanging from trees in our garden. There was no meaning to them or to the arrangement. I wound a long red string of light to the ash tree and a soft amber light to the cherry tree. I fixed three projectors on the grass to shine on the beech trees, plastering them with laser dots of red and green and drenching them with a moving light that simulated snow. In fact, that was the evening when the temperature in Leitrim was minus two and the sky was clear, so it got as close to Warsaw as I could imagine. And I needed a hot whiskey afterwards when I pulled off the wellies and settled by the stove. And yes, it was like Christmas. I had forgotten the magical simplicity of childhood, the wonder of the baby born in the manger, the star in the east, and the homemade crib I always made with one single lamp and a cardboard box underneath the tree. I looked out from the garden and marvelled at the garden and the patio. They looked more like a street in Warsaw, an exclusive restaurant maybe, much more sophisticated now than anything in the hills above Loch Allen that John McGarren would have remembered as his childhood on the lonely roads. But then the phone rang and the beloved answered it. And though it wasn't a long call, I knew when she closed her phone that the world had changed. We would be alone for Christmas. Our age, COVID concerns, had all led the family to signal that they were worried about coming to us for the holiday. Their jobs involved interaction with others. Their, jo- their, their work involved the meat factory and their hearts were heavy with worry. So we said, don't come. It's best to be careful. And I look out the window, and the lights in the garden seemed to mock me. I went to bed and slept and dreamt of inundation, water in a rented house, although there was a brush near boy, and I sensed I could cope. I woke and spoke to the beloved in the morning. It will be okay, I said, because we will have them in our hearts. And rather than mourn their loss for this Christmas, we agreed that we should be grateful for our health and we should make Christmas just as busy and wonderful as if they were all there. So instead of dampening my enthusiasm for the garden, I resolved to make it brighter. 
I've got more lights and even a stag that shines up on the patio. We took a Christmas tree from the garden and drenched it with a thousand lights. The hedge, too, I laced with lights. And all to say, a light is shining here in this darkness. A light. There wasn't a single religious motif in any light or ornament, and yet they spoke clearly of my heart. So tomorrow I will phone and Skype and Zoom and turn the camera on the trees and the little bushes to show them that we are celebrating, to show them that they are here. The light is on just like it is in Donegal and Kerry and all across the island. I don't share much of my Christian faith anymore because I got disillusioned one time. Too many. But the institution. But Jesus is my brother. And when I look at all the model lights, I know that he meant something exactly the same about the light shining in the darkness. It was never about Jesus. He was only the way. He was only putting images about the way to go. I wrote that for Christmas in the Irish Times. And I just thought as I was sitting here in the hospital in Beaumont that I would share it with you. Because there's two things in it that matter to me now. One is the way in which I used all those lights at Christmas, fairy lights, gaudy lights, reindeers, all sorts of old nonsense. And I used them because I felt lonely. I felt I was going to miss the family around us. And even though we were living way up the hills where nobody could see it, we're not in a suburbia area, but I still wanted to put up the lights on the trees, fling them up and in some way make a ritual gesture that there is light in the darkness. And that to me was what Jesus was doing. The same thing. He wasn't pointing at himself. He was saying the kingdom of heaven is now. It's here. It's like even in this darkness there is light. And that's something I feel like at a psychological level, at a physical level, at an emotional level. You know, at a physical level there's there's light because, you know, they say that, that all matter is frozen light. It's almost it's a scientific reality. But at a psychological level, there, we all talk about having dark times and feeling dark and, and being in the dark, and then you have the sense that there's a light in the darkness. And, and that's what Christmas meant to me. But the thing was that I found myself doing it in a secular way. I wasn't at church. At Christmas, I wasn't at church for many, many years. And yet I was doing something with the little gaudy lights on the tree, which was exactly the same as if I was in a little oratory and I was lighting a night light in front of a sacred heart picture or something. I was I was making a gesture. I was making real in the physical world a metaphor of hope. And I have to say that's come back to me now that we're at Easter. And I'm sitting in this ward in the hospital in Dublin. And you get the sense that that there is so much suffering and pain and ill health in the world. And li- lives of people are so difficult in their struggles. And you think that's, that's a kind of a, a darkness until you realize everybody is making the same journey of doing something that expresses a deeper inner light. And people seem to me to walk around 
with the light inside them. Patients I'm looking at lying in beds and suffering and struggling to move around in the bed and yet there's a luminosity and the doctors and particularly the nurses and the the assistant nurses and all the people who are really tending to the sick I find a kind of luminosity in them and it's a luminosity that I find in myself if I sit long enough and be still long enough and stay quiet long enough so that you might call it some kind of meditation sometimes I call it dozing I would have a passion for dozing. Dozing is, is, is the Irish tradition of meditation. But but if you do become still and you're sitting there and you're like a mountain in the chair and you can sense your breathing and you're aware of yourself in the room, there's a luminosity right at the centre. You can go closer and closer in. You could maybe spend 10 years trying to get inside to the very centre of just your breath, just your one single breath and to be awake in that and to find one single point. And you, and you realise, number one, it's a point of light. And you realise, and this is the really big news, I can't even say it, you know. I can't even explain it. All I can say is that when I'm on Good Friday, I'm thinking about a man who is extraordinary. A man who, who, like the Buddha, was enlightened and spoke to the people around him in his own tradition, in the Jewish tradition, to say, you know, the kingdom of, of God is now. It's here and now. It's, it's like something inside you. It's within you. It's, it's how you live in the world. And once you get there, Time falls away. So this question of afterlife is only cardiology because afterlife implies there's a, a kind of a linear heaven, you know, that people who died a hundred years ago are gone to heaven timeline-wise. How long have you been here, Shakespeare? Oh, I've been here 400 years in heaven. Ah, right. But heaven as eternity is outside time and if it's outside time it's outside future or past it's all mixed up it's just like beyond time and and eternity is something that can be penetrated from anywhere from any time and that's that's the key in in buddhism is the key in the christian tradition is the key in many many traditions in islam I think is in the Sufi tradition to say that God is the God says I am the secret that longs to be revealed. You know. So almost the sense when you're walking around that do you know the way the world seems new sometimes? The world like the world can seem in a second suddenly glimmering with newness. And it's as if behind the physical world there was a presence longing for you, longing to reveal to you. And now you go inside into the, on the inside space, in your own meditations, whatever you're doing, and you'll find at the very center of that a big, big sense of presence. Of course, it's your presence. Because you are not in your limbs and you're not in your body, you're not in your mind, you're not in your thoughts. You're in the looking, you're only in the looking, you're only in the awareness, you're only in the in the emptiness that holds the form. And form is emptiness and emptiness is form, as to say in the Buddhist crowd. And you're there when you get for a second to that centre, it would be just luminosity. It would just be witnessing everything. Being in the hospital obviously gives me the privilege to become aware, just to become aware of the people around me. 
the word for meditation in, in, in Tibet, as far as I know, is, is like familiarity. It's familiarity with. We're meditating 24 hours a day. It's just a question of what we're meditating on. What kind of narratives are running through our head? Or what we're looking at on the internet, on Facebook, you know? But if you can kind of still the mind and get into some space inside, I've never been there, of course I haven't. You'd, you'd be enlightened if you were, sure. You'd be walking around, they'd be looking at you, you know? They'd say, Jesus, look at your man, he's, he's enlightened. <laughs> but I don't search for it either now. I don't, I don't try and pursue this thing of religion. I just stop and let it be inside me. Let it announce itself, because certainly there is some core in me, in you, that is the watching bit. It has no form. It's just the emptiness that holds the form, that knows the form, with the heart, knows the form, knows the shape of everything, the presences of people around you, and knows it with your heart and it itself. You say, is that me? No, because every bit time I name something, then that's not me because it's the bit that I'm holding. So who's doing the holding at my center? Who's holding? Do you know the way they say, you need to hold it together. Now, I had an operation last week, and I tell you, I was lying in the bed with a catheter, and I, I'd be saying to myself, I need to hold this together for another couple of days. But who is holding me together? Is it me? And, and there's where you start to let go and realize the bit of it that's holding you together Is something else. I'm not going to go there. But that's something else. You can call it a higher self or you can call it cosmic Christ or Buddha, whatever. Call it the universe. I don't know. But it's 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 what is. It's what is. It, it is. It's here. You know, we're here. You're there and I'm here. And we've been here for a year. I started on the 13th of April and I'm doing this on Good Friday, 2021, with enormous joy, even though I'm in hospital. Oh, with enormous joy to be alive and to be here. And my here in its particularity at the moment is corridor after corridor and room after room and bed after bed people suffering, coming and going from operations. And I think about that centre in me, that centre in you, that centre in all and every single being in the whole hospital, and that that is the same single centre. It's the same single consciousness, holding, holding, holding everything and in that I think of Good Friday and I think of a man who had that same consciousness that same presence eternity within him on the cross tortured to death what an amazing single image of the Godhead, the Buddha, whatever you want to say, this great consciousness, this cosmic consciousness, being, holding time, being, holding us. There it is. That's a load of confused stuff, but it comes, to be honest with you, from my heart, from me to you on Good Friday on the journey towards the great dawn for all of us and that
that Easter day is every day and every minute of every day where you feel the world is new. You look into the eyes of your beloved, your children, your parents. You feel this day is like the beginning of the entire universe. And that's the Easter that I hope you have every day. Thank you for being here.